Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to fit in a thrift flip video. I know I've been doing a lot of, uh, of holiday things with fall and starting with the Christmas things, but uh, I decided I wanted to do this tray. I wanted to make it over so so uh, I decided to do a video with a small vignette. So now I've already cleaned this and it is silver plate. It isn't real silver, uh, but uh, I don't do well selling silver plate items, but I do like the look of them. So what I've decided to do on this one is uh, to leave some of it, the silver plate and paint the rest. And I could paint directly onto this, uh, but sometimes I struggle with it not sticking quite as well as I want it to. So I decided just to play it safe and go ahead and do a coat of slick stick on this. So that's a Dixie Belle product that helps paint slick, uh, stick to slicker surfaces. So I just very, very carefully paint out around that outer edge and it's lifted so um, it makes it a little bit easier and if I get any on it I can just take a damp cloth and wipe it off. So I do one coat of this slick stick and let it dry and then the color that I'm going to be using is um, is a combination of the color sea glass and the color buttercream. And I want the, the color of the sea glass but I want it to be lighter. So um, I've learned that a combination of those two colors is a very pretty color and I actually went about two to one, uh, two being the buttercream and one the sea glass and I really like the color that I ended up with. And I don't measure on this, I just put about two parts buttercream and one part um, of the sea glass and then I stirred it well and I uh, did two coats of this on the part of the um, of the tray that was painted with the slick stick. I still left the outer edge in the original finish. As you can see, you don't lose that pretty sea glass color here. It just kind of warms it up a little bit and lightens it a little. So again, I did two coats on this and um and I, I didn't paint the outer edge and i also didn't paint the back of this so i do like to do that with silver plate a lot of times is just leave part of it the silver plate uh, because i think it's nice to see that it was originally the silver plate and i think that the colors work well together also so once I got two coats on that and let it dry, then I sprayed it with a clear top coat uh, because I'm going to be putting a stamp on this. And I don't want to make a mistake and not be able to remove it very quickly. So this is part of the stamp set Reverie and this is an IOD stamp set and I will include a link of where I got this but I love this little stamp set. Now I'm using gray ink here and I'm just using a cheap gray ink because that's what I have. And I'm just gonna put another top coat, actually a couple more top coats on it to make sure that that stays on well. Because I wanted this to be very faint. I wanted it to be, to look kind of faded and make this look older. So I stamped that larger piece in the center and then I'm just going to take some of the other pieces from that same, same stamp set and just go all the way around the outer edge. And this is what I ended up with. I really liked the look of this. And then I had this napkin holder that I want to redo. So um, I decided to paint this also in that same color. Uh, but first I added some of my um, redesign with Prima trim mold that I had done ahead in hot glue and then I gave this two coats of that same color. And because I want to use this rice paper, 
uh, and I can't even remember where I got this rice paper. I've had it a while and just kind of ran into it the other day, uh, but I will try to find it, and if I do, I will add a link to this. Uh, but because I want to use this, I went ahead and painted that very front in the color buttercream. So uh, I tore this out. If you've never used rice paper for decoupage, uh, you're really missing out because um, I find it to be one of, of the easiest papers to decoupage with. It's very forgiving uh, because it you can do it with easily without getting bubbles in it uh, but then also it's very durable and personally I like that um, fibrous edge that you get when you tear it out so I'm just putting this on with some matte finish decoupage and then I will clear coat the whole thing and that this one will be finished and I'm just loving these colors together so I had a frame in my stash, and um, so I want to make it go along with this. I'm gonna take another one of those uh, rice papers and put in it, but I wanted to kind of marry it with the other colors. So what I did was I took some of that, uh, the blue that I had mixed and brushed it into all the detail on the frame and then just kind of wiped it off with a damp cloth. And then I finished it off with a clear finish. And I think it's amazing how that simple step just changes this up completely. Again, I just paint it on and just wipe it off with a slightly damp cloth. And then I put some white cardstock in the back of the, um, of the frame and then uh, glued that um the print over the top of that and then this one that's all that i end up doing to it now i did finish this off with a clear finish once it dried now next i'm going to take a bottle and uh, make it over using this one of these same prints and since glass uh, obviously is slick, I want to uh, paint this with the slick stick first as well. So uh, once this dries well, then um, I paint this with two coats of the color buttercream. And I know I use buttercream a lot. I've had a couple of comments about that. I think some people may be getting a little tired of it, but uh, it's just a neutral white for me. I feel like it is not stark white, uh, so it tones that down, but it also isn't too yellow. To me, it's just the perfect shade of white, so it just makes a good base for a lot of my projects. So now that it's dry, I'm gonna tear out another one of these angel images and or cherub images and decoupage that on the front. And I think that alone would be, would be great, but I'm gonna add some other little touches as well. So once this dries, I, I took some vintage lace and went around the neck of it. And I've had a couple of people ask me about these little boards that I store my lace on. And I think this one, I bought these little board shapes at the Dollar General a few years ago. And uh, we just decoupaged a napkin on them and then just wrapped our uh, lace around it. Uh, I also have some that I just used a straight board on, just a square board and uh, we decoupaged on that and used that. So uh, you could use cardboard also. So I'm just wrapping this around the top here and in hindsight, I probably should have waited on this step because I end up adding that um, trim mold there that I did in um, hot glue around the bottom and obviously because it's the glue I ended up having to paint it. So I just very carefully went over that with um, 
with some of that buttercream and was just really careful around that lace at the top. Now I didn't mention that I glued this on with uh, some tight bond with a little bit of hot glue so that it would stay, have that immediate hold. So once I got that painted and that dried, then I took some of my bronze gilding wax and I uh, used it to go over that little thing that I'm using to put in the top. And I think that that's one of those things that screws into the side of a dresser mirror to attach it to those arms on the, on the dresser. Uh, but it's going to work perfectly to put in the top of this. Now once I got this painted and let it dry uh, and also sprayed it with a clear finish, then um, I used some of this bronze gilding wax uh, on this little knob and then also used some of that gilding just very lightly around uh, the edges on the bottle. And I think that's just enough to kind of pull this all together. And uh, so I went around the, the sharper edges and then went around the very top of the bottle. And uh, I even took a little bit and went over the mold just to bring out a little bit more of that detail. And I really like how this one turned out. I think it changed it up a lot without really doing that much to it. And as you can see, that little knob fit perfectly there in the top. I have four hang tags to show today. All of these are from uh, Jacqueline Morris in Albany, Indiana. And uh, I absolutely love these. This is an absolutely gorgeous church and I love the angels there on the top and all this beautiful beautiful detail in the back uh, so this is the first one and I love this Billy Graham quote on the tag there that's a nice touch and then this one I like uh, I like all the color and detail on this look at that little tiny snowman there in the corner. I think this is just so pretty and I love the welcoming door on the bottom. Um, this one is just absolutely beautiful. And the next two have a lot of the true meaning of Christmas in them and uh, I love that little scripture there on the bottom and uh, it looks like she did some sanding on this one which I absolutely love that distressed look of that. And I love the way she did the, the outer edge there. And I'm just amazed at all the little touches that she's added to her tag, uh, or her tags. Uh, there's just so much interest in all of them. Now this one is the fall one, and I just thought it was so sweet with that little girl tending her garden. And I thought that was just a really, really sweet touch. And then I love the little pumpkin tag hanging off the top of it. And then on the back of it, she added some, um, some friendship sentiment. And I think that's just so sweet. And I love the little fall leaves. It brought that, the look from the front back to the back. I just think it's such a good idea. And I appreciate Catherine so much also for sending me um, a bunch of crafting goodies. That was so sweet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.